Today, I'm gonna to share some really important concepts that you need to know if you want your beats to sound more professional. Every time I put a new video out, someone in the comment section below asks me to do a video on mixing and mastering. And most often they think that that's going to be the thing that makes their beats sound professional. That's definitely what I thought when I first started making beats. But it seemed like no matter how many videos I watched on mixing and mastering, how much I read up on it, nothing seemed to help. Eventually I understood that the problem with my beats was occurring way earlier in the beat making process and had very little to do with mixing and mastering. By the way guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's really quick and easy to do and if you get tired of seeing my videos, you can always just unsubscribe. It really does help my channel out though. Here I have a beat from one of my subscribers, Malume with the most, and I want to use his beat to show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm going to quickly play a portion of the beat for you guys here. One of the things that's really important and often overlooked when it comes to making professional sounding beats are the sounds that you choose. You need to use good sounds, but you might be thinking, what actually is a good sound? Let's explore that idea with this beat here. Let's focus in on this sound here. That's the sort of main sound of the beat overall. I'm going to show you guys some of the things that I would do to make this texture sound good and therefore make the beat sound more professional. You should have a bunch of effects at your disposal that you can use to make your sounds more unique. Some of the common ones that I like to go for are things like reels, which is a tape emulation effect. Using chorus can be really helpful as well, even the one that just comes stock with your DAW. As well as reverb, that's a very helpful tool as well. So you guys can see this is the original effects chain that the producer had on their beat originally. Just two effects, gross beat and some EQing. And that's how you get this sound here. And we can compare that to what I did with my effects chain. You guys can see I just used a lot more effects to get the sound to be a lot more unique. You guys can hear I'm starting to make something that an amateur producer would have a hard time creating themselves. This is going to help set my beat apart from something an amateur producer would be able to do themselves and therefore make my beat feel a little bit more professional. And this is what a good sound would mean in this context. Something that sounds unique that sets your beat apart from the usual typical types of sounds that you hear in most beats. Sometimes I see producers mention how they are thinking of taking their beats to an engineer in the hopes that they're going to help them make their beats sound more professional. And if you're thinking of doing this, what you need to understand is that a lot of the things that I just did to the sound to make it sound more professional, an engineer will not do for you. Their job is just to clean up whatever sounds you provide them, not make creative decisions like this for you. A lot of the things an engineer would do and a lot of the things that you might read online when it comes to mixing and mastering falls more in line with functional mixing. Whereas a lot of the stuff that we're doing here falls more in line with creative mixing and there is a really important distinction that needs to be made here. Functional mixing are more small little things to slightly improve your sound. So that would be things like taking an EQ and making slight boosts or cuts to your sound, or maybe slightly adding some effects on top. And these are the types of things that just will not help you out if you have this problem where your textures aren't unique and they don't sound professional. Whereas we have creative mixing, the type of stuff that we're doing here, this is where you take your mixing tools and you make some extreme and drastic changes to your sound so they have a lot more character. With creative mixing, our textures are just gonna sound a lot more rich and a lot less like a stock sound that every amateur producer has access to. And that's fundamentally what a good sound is in this context. I'm sure there are plenty of times when you've heard a professional beat where you thought to yourself, I have no idea what that sound is, how do they even do that? That's the type of thing that you should be trying to create in your own beats. Using common basic presets and doing absolutely nothing to them is like using toilet water for your soup. No matter how much work you put into the other ingredients, there's still toilet water in it and it's always going to be toilet water soup. So you got to make sure all of your ingredients are good. The next thing I want to talk about is keeping things simple. This is another problem that I see a lot of producers run into. Looking at this beat, there are sections here where there's just a lot going on. <music> And this is something that you might run into where you come up with your initial loop, but as it stands on its own, it doesn't sound all that full, it doesn't sound all that good. So instead of working to improve it like we did with this first synth here, 
What you do instead is try to add more into the beat, more instruments, more melodies, more counter melodies. You think that's gonna be the thing that solves your problem, but you can easily end up cluttering your beat like we have here. What's possibly a better way to think about this is what you wanna do is try to make your beat sound as full as possible with the least amount of sounds. This idea is what a lot of producers mean when they say to keep things simple. With this beat here, I definitely need to do work to minimize this arrangement because as it stands right now, it's just overly complicated. Going through these sounds one by one with what I did with the first synth here. It feels like it fills up a lot more room in the beat and this choir texture here. It just isn't as needed now and it's cluttering up the beat. Even if I mute this completely, the beat sounds all right on its own with just the main synth here. But let's just say for argument's sake, no matter what, I do want to include this choir sound in the beat. I can simplify this beat by changing how this sound is being used. I already have my primary texture, which is this main synth here. So what I want to do with this choir sound is make it a lot more secondary. In this example, I'm going to change the pattern itself here. Instead of having these prolonged notes here, I'm gonna make them far more stabby. I'm also gonna reduce the amount of notes in this pattern and make this arrangement a lot more simple. So you guys can hear we're going more towards simplification here. This is something that you wanna keep in mind. If you get to the point where you're adding more and more sounds, more and more textures into your beat, and you still can't get it to sound professional, it might be a good idea to start to scale everything back, simplify your arrangements, and start to improve your sounds instead. You just might find that you didn't even need all those sounds to begin with. A lot of the times when you're trying to make your beats sound more professional, your objective should be how you can get your idea across with the least amount of sounds, not the most. And now this is gonna lead me to my next point. Where are your sounds sitting? This is more traditional mixing advice here. Right now we have this main synth as well as this choir sitting in very similar spaces in terms of the stereo space as well as the frequency space and its overall depth. So again, we just have too much clutter right now. And this is one of the difficult things when it comes to beat making. You work so hard to come up with a sound or a pattern and you wanna showcase it because you think it sounds so cool. But we need to do what's best for the beat. This is something that you wanna keep in mind. You just cannot have too many sounds sit in the spotlight no matter how much you love them all. So already with the way we changed this choir sound and what we did with this pattern as well as the sound itself, it's starting to feel a little bit more secondary in the beat. Now I'm gonna make a change to the choir sound to be a lot more secondary using some more traditional mixing techniques. So I'm gonna throw some effects on top of the sound like an EQ as well as auto pitch to better separate the sound so it doesn't share the exact same space as my initial synth here. I'm also gonna add some delay on top of the sound so it sits a little bit further back in terms of its depth. And I'm also gonna make the sound a lot more stereo just because my initial synth was a lot more mono. And now it just feels like it fits a lot better in the beat. By no means is it in the spotlight as much as it was initially, but unfortunately that's just the way it has to be. The same thing applies with the synthy bass that we have here. Again, we need to avoid the compulsion of just throwing sounds in just for the sake of it. You need to think, what's the intention? Why am I doing this? With this sound in particular, unfortunately, I'm not 100% sure. We already have an 808 in our beat, so there's no real need for the bassier tones that come with this sound. We already have sounds that take up the mid-range as well as the low mid-range, so those parts of this sound aren't really needed either. So thinking about the sound and what is contributing to the overall beat, it's not really adding much, and more than anything, it's really just getting in the way of our other sounds in the beat. Now, if you are gonna add more textures into your beat, a good place to start thinking about is what's needed. Think about what void needs to be filled in terms of the frequency space that isn't currently taken up yet, or where in the stereo space or the overall depth in the beat needs filling, and try to choose a sound that fills that void instead of just throwing any old sound into your beat. So instead of using this sound here, I'm gonna use this sound here. Just because this sound doesn't feel like it clashes with any of the other sounds and it fills a particular void in the beat that might have been missing. As well, I think it might be a good idea to change this pattern, but overall you guys get the idea of what I'm going for here. Don't just throw in sounds for the sake of it. Understand what your beat needs in terms of the frequency and spaces that need to be filled and be intentional with the sounds that you choose to add if you do make the decision to add more sounds into your beat. And finally, the last thing I wanna talk about in terms of getting your beat to sound professional. This is one of the things that I would say was done well in this beat. You guys can see down here. 
Malume with the most did a good job of just adding random textures, these random samples and sounds throughout the beat. And it just added a layer of detail and character into the beat that might have been missing. This is a concept that I showed you guys in a video I made a while back on three different techniques that you can use to make your beats sound more interesting overall. So check that video out if you haven't seen it. But this really does help your beat sound a lot more professional. A lot of people ask me, what does it sound like to actually improve at beat making? What does that actually look like? I think a good visual representation of that idea is this one here. Basically, when you first start, you're just trying to get something that seems to fit the form of a beat. It seems somewhat rough and crude, somewhat basic, but nonetheless, it seems like what a beat would sound like. And once you start improving, once you start to get better, you're going to start to pay more attention to the smaller and smaller details. So the next step here might be to pay more attention to your drum patterns to be a little bit more detailed and intricate with those or even maybe make a more complicated bass pattern. And after that, you might do something like this that Malume with the most did with their beat here, where you add smaller and smaller details in terms of the overall arrangement, adding little sounds that go in and out of the beat. After this, you might pay attention to some of the smaller details in your beat, like what the transitions sound like, as well as automating certain sounds and effects. In my opinion, to get your beat to sound more and more professional, the way that's gonna look is to pay attention to the smaller and smaller details in your beat. So in the end, this is how the beat sounds after I made all of my adjustments. And again, this is how the original sounded. To quickly go through some of the smaller details that I changed here, I also pitch shifted some of the hi-hats here. Just for personal taste, I thought they sounded a little bit too bright and polished, so I pitch shifted them down. I also recolored the snare, so this is how it sounded without any of these effects. I added some Camel Crusher on top to really improve the density of the sound, and I also EQ'd the snare somewhat extremely here. I also distorted the 808 here, this is how it sounded before how it sounds after. Beyond that, I'd probably rearrange this beat overall. I'd probably go for a more traditional structure like I showed you guys in my video about structuring out your beats. But nonetheless, those are the things that I think are really important if you want to get your beats to sound a lot more professional. If you guys have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below what advice would you give to a new producer if they wanted to make better and more professional sounding beats. My free drum kit is available in the description box below as well as the link to the Discord if you want your beats reviewed live. I do that every two weeks and I will see you guys next time.